Hello everyone, and Donna here with another vlog. Paul and I had recently disembarked off Anthem of the Seas, a Royal Caribbean ship which has been cruising out of Southampton for the past couple of years. We just completed an 11 night journey around the Canary Islands, Portugal, Spain and Madeira. There's some stuff I want to cover about what I enjoyed about the ship, but very little to say that's bad about the ship or rather negative and things that I've learnt that I'm going to incorporate in the future when we are back on Anthem of the Seas in May next year with our good friends Carl and Sarah and it will be their very first time cruising. So let's crack on shall we? When we was on Anthem, we was on the port side of the ship towards the front and we were on deck 11, cabin 154, where it was slightly different than when we was on her last year. This time the bed was next to the balcony door. So every time you woke up, if you slept with curtains open, the first thing you would see is that car motion as the ship is cutting through it. The cabin was very tidy, so there was no issues there. Everything had its place. It was, it smelt clean, it looked clean. It was just a case of waiting to lay claim on it with our bags when they actually did turn up in the end. Our cabin was perfectly situated on deck 11, as I said, on the port side. So all you had to do was go in the list, which was literally around the corner, straight up to deck 14, and you came out on double doors, and just to your right, there was a solarium. The solarium has been one of my favourite parts of the ship and especially where that swing is. I only managed to sit on the swing the one time for the whole holiday but at least that made me very happy because the last time I could not get on it. The only con with the solarium was that the um, the windows do open but they never had them open so when you got those really hot days where the sun's blaring in and it's like a greenhouse it got very hot and stuffy in there. The only way you could actually solve that problem was to get into the pools, which were quite cool. But then you got too cold and had to get out and suffer with the greenhouse effect of the solarium again. One thing I would always hope the Royal Caribbean might do in the future is to crank those windows open. Even the indoor pool has a retractable roof, but they never seem to have it open. It was not open in the duration of our holiday. There was a lot of entertainment while we was on Anthem at the Seas, but we weren't really jumping at the opportunities of what it had to offer, as really Carl and I are quite, um, the, 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 we're the kind of people who just like to keep ourselves to ourselves. Spectra's Cabaret was on in the 270, but again, we didn't go to that for the simple reasons that we went uh, and we saw that uh, when we was on Anthem last year. So we had seen that already. So it was just going to be the same again. And I wasn't really too fussed about going to watch it. Besides that, there were things that were going on, shows that were going on in the Royal Theatre. There was um, a show called The Gift. I can't remember if We Will Rock You was on. I think it was, but we didn't go and see that. I personally am not a fan of musicals and stage performances. They've never really entertained me. So those were the kind of things that I didn't attend when we was on board the ship. However, the one place we did go to, and it wasn't till the end of the cruise, was the show Crazy Quest. Absolutely fantastic. Hilarious 18 plus scavenger hunt slash game show. The other thing that I loved about the, the ship was the bumper cars. I thought that was amazing. We did not get to do that last time we were on Anthem. So being able to do the bumper cars was fantastic. Unfortunately, Carl could not do it because he was wearing sandals that day and you need a closed toe shoe. I was wearing my Crocs, so they allowed it. So he had to stay on the sidelines and video me having all the fun. And and I have to say, it was a lot of fun. Pretty sure I did get whiplash that day because my neck was sore right after that had happened. Someone bumped into me head on. And I know the general rule of like dodgings and bumper cars, you're not really supposed to hit someone head on because of that reaction. 
So unfortunately, um, I did have a little bit of soreness here, but it didn't last very long. So my advice is don't bump into people head on. The food on Anthem was delicious. I've seen a lot of negative reviews about Royal Caribbean food. It could just be that I'm a fat pig and I love eating, but I found a lot of the food was... I enjoyed it personally. It was lovely. I didn't find any issues. I wasn't ill after it. It was great. Fantastic. Our favourite place was Chops Grill. Now we did this special offer that they were doing on the ship and it was like a, I think it was $164 per person for three specialty restaurants. Then you got a fourth one for free. So what we did, uh, Chops Grill twice, we did a Zoomy and then we did Jamie's Italian. Now I'm not going to spoil anything that might be a nice surprise when you visit these specialty restaurants if you decide to do so but they're definitely worth a try if you're willing to spend the money of course but we thoroughly did enjoy Chops Grill. Carl was especially happy because and you can't in the UK anywhere get a blue steak. They just don't do it. They go as far as rare if you're lucky as well. So when he was able to have his blue steak on the ship or any of his meat, um, he wanted it pretty much like raw and still wiggling on the plate. Me on the other hand, I stick with medium and even then the meat just fell off. It just fell apart. It was amazing, gorgeous. Even the chicken just melted right off the bone. It was fabulous food. I really enjoyed the food in the main dining room. I thought it was really nice. The servers that we had were really nice as well. And sometimes during the cruise, they had a little celebratory parade. Um, we did a Caribbean night and they were dancing around the main dining room. That was fantastic. That was quite funny, actually. A lot of them were just like waving at the cameras. Everybody was swinging the serviettes around, clapping the hands. I didn't, I didn't swing my serviette around, but I did clap my hands. They were really seemed like they were enjoying it and that was really nice to see as well and I personally found the food okay in the main dining room um, whether I actually tasted any of it because I swallowed it whole. I mean to be fair overall on this cruise when I came back to get weighed at Slimming World this Saturday morning so two days after we got back uh, for Southampton I actually found out I put on 14 pounds that is a whole damn stone so actually now the process is that I am trying to lose that stone again and the clients at work, the elderly, two of them in particular, actually noticed that I put the weight back on. So I was just like, oh my God. So I am working back to losing that weight. So I want to shift to some things that I have learnt when we was on Anthem. Now, recently, uh, the last few months or so, I have been on YouTube watching videos regarding packing ideas, the way to... Um, pack less but fit more into your case so things that you like cables and that you can downsize them to a small cable um, the way you roll clothes up and pack things into your case There's some really great things that I learned on YouTube and some kind of what people call hacks uh, for example, I had a shoe organiser and it wasn't necessarily to put shoes in because it turned out that my shoes didn't actually fit in it. But I used it for things like painkillers when we had a headache, a first aid kit, my tripods, my travel plugs, anything that I could just arrange into it to keep things tidy and free up the table space. I do have a video before we went on the cruise of some of my favourite things that I have found online that I was ready to put to the test when we got on the ship and I will actually link that in the card above. We had a hard time trying to snag ourselves some like travel washing tablets like I don't know what they are or they're like detergent sheets or something. We kept forgetting to pick some up so me being me hopped onto Amazon and managed to snag some Dr Beckman travel wash which one tube can go up to 20 washes which I thought was really good and we just took the one tube with us out of the four that we bought off Amazon as like a multi-pack 
smelt really really nice and they really did the job and we didn't actually have to use the laundry sh uh, service on the ship at all. One negative that we discovered in our cabin on Anthem was that our sh shower cubicle did not have a washing line across the top where it's like a pulley cord that you pull out, you pull along to the other side, latch it on and you can hang your washing on. So the next time that we sail, on the off chance that we do not have one again in our cabin, we'll be buying a travel washing line which we can actually just hook onto the... Um, well, wherever we want to hook it. And I think because there's only a limited supply of pegs on that line, we'll probably have to just take two or three extra pegs as well so that we can hang things in the middle. It was a bit disappointing, to be fair, that there was no washing line. It did make it harder for us to be able to dry off clothes. We actually had to use the deck chairs uh, that are on the balcony on the hot days that we were in port to lay things out on the chairs and dry them off in the hot sun. And the only day we had the sun down directly on our cabin for most of the day was when we was in Vigo. It was a bit awkward because even though we had magnetic hooks that we could attach to the ceiling, like just stick them to the ceiling and hang stuff on, we had to ask our stateroom attendant just to not go in the bathroom because all our smalls were hanging off these hooks. And the last thing I want is to him needing therapy because he walked into a pair of my knickers. One other negative that I'd have to say about the cruise is our port days were so short. So when I was doing my vlogs in certain destinations, we couldn't like really get into it. The only time that we were able to do a substantial amount of vlogging, or I was, was when we was in Madeira. A lot of the other port days were very, very short and Gangway was up at either half four or even when we was in Vigo, it was half past two. It could be for a number of reasons. One I put it down to was probably tides um, in certain ports. But I don't know because I wouldn't have any knowledge in that area. But either way, the port days were quite short. So when it came to stuff like excursions and that, we had missed out on a lot of excursions, but they were so expensive that we're better off just getting off the ship and having a wander. And because of that, we don't really get to go to places that we wanted to visit. Like when we docked in Tenerife, we wanted to go to either Cyan Park or Loro Park, but the excursions for Loro Park were sold, completely sold out. And Cyan Park is quite far away. The to be honest with you, they're both very far away, but the time that you had in port, you wouldn't have had a massive amount of time at those places that you were visiting. So I don't know how much time people actually got at the likes of Loro Park when the ship was leaving at five o'clock in the evening. But strangely enough, the current itinerary that Anthem is on now, the port days are actually longer. So I took that down to being weather, maybe tides or something. I'm really not sure. But we, our days were quite short. So vlogging was quite difficult to be able to really get out and vlog places we visited and explore properly. So as much as I enjoyed doing the vlogging, it wasn't panning out how I hoped it would because of the short days in port. But I think I did all right, to be honest with you. I'm looking forward again to going on Anthem next year. And hopefully, because I have Carl and Sarah there with me, that my vlogs will be much more improved as I know that my other half doesn't want to be in them. I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog and it was a little bit more insightful. I would love it if you hit subscribe and tap on the bell and you'll get a notification when another video goes online. But until that time, I'll see you guys in my next vlog.